Once we've amplified um, our fungal tissue, uh, the DNA in our fungal tissue, we want to test them because we could just send off um, the amplified um, uh, DNA to the lab, but it doesn't always work out. Sometimes things fail. So rather than just paying whatever it costs to have them sequenced, we're going to do a test. So this is the setup. Uh, all the things we're going to need. We're going to need some uh, loading buffer. We're going to put that on uh, just a little bit of foil here. Uh, we're going to weigh out some agarose, uh, 20 uh, milligrams. That's why we need a special scale because a regular scale is at, uh, you, you're not able to measure it out exactly enough. We're going to pour a gel in here with this comb. Um, this is our actual gel electrophoresis setup. We're going to put the gel in here and we're going to put some buffer on it and we, we're then going to force the DNA uh, through it. Um, this once again allows us to see it in, in uh, because it's, you get better con contrast looking through here. Uh, we're going to need um, um, a glass uh, jar because uh, we're going to boil the agar for 30 seconds in the microwave. Here's our uh, tris buffer that we're going to do that with. And we're also going to use a regular scale um, to measure out the tris buffer. So I've measured out uh, 20 milligrams of agarose. I've put that into the glass jar. I measure out uh, 20 milliliters of the buffer. Here we go. That's it. And we're going to put that in the microwave for 30 seconds. It's dissolved very nicely. So now we're going to pour it into the forms and we're going to make a gel with it. It's important that the comb is in there because the comb is going to make the wells. The comb has two ends. We're going to use the end that creates nine wells uh, rather than the other end, which has uh, creates more wells. Um, and we're going to add a little bit of the uh, nucle nucleic acid stain in a minute. We're just going to give it a chance to cool down a tiny little bit. So we're going to um, make about two microliters of the nucleic acid stain. And we're going to mix it in to the, to, to the gel. It's still liquid. It hasn't formed a gel yet. We kind of just sort of blend it around and distribute it until the stain is fairly equally distributed. Yep, I call that good. So now we're just going to let it sit for about 10 minutes so it has a chance to set. So we're going to have to put about 30 milliliters of uh, the TDE buffer into the glass jar because that's what we're going to pour over the uh, gel. And there we go. And then what we're going to have to do is um, put eight drops of the loading dye onto a strip of aluminum, um, about three microliters per dot. So I'm going to just do them one by one. Um, and the reason we're doing it like that is like uh, it's easier to mix the individual mushroom samples with the loading dye if we just sort of do it drop by drop. So we're going to individually mix them on this piece of aluminum, and then we're gonna drop them into the gel. So we're gonna do this eight times. Here we go. So our gel should have set at this point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out the comb first, and then we're gonna lift this tray out, and we're gonna put it in here, there's this plastic piece that kind of slots in here. We're going to put the agar gel in there. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pour over some of the TDE buffer to just cover it. 30 micro, uh, 30 milliliters to just cover it. The next step is a little bit more challenging. What we're going to have to do is we put on a fresh pipette tip for each of the mushroom samples, and we're going to. Take one of these, 
open it up uh, take about seven or six or seven microliters um, of the contents hang on I'm just setting setting it um, and then we're gonna put that on top of one of those drops and mix it a little bit with the tip of the pipette and then we're going to sort of aspirate it all back in so it's in the pipette at uh, the mix of the loading dye and the actual DNA template and then we're going to inject it into one of the wells that's been created by the comb and you're going to have to use a different pipette tip for obviously for each of the samples And here we are. I filled eight of the wells with the mixture of the uh, fungal DNA and the loading dye. I made a little mistake there and I left one blank in the middle, but I still had room for all eight of them. So that's um, all of our DNA loaded. And the next um, step will be to look at it um, with the trans illuminator once we um, switch on the current. So we're going to switch this on. And um, then we're going to put the cover off. And then we're going to put um, the, the black cover over it. And then in a couple of minutes, we're going to be able to see if there are bands. And obviously, when there's a band, that's good. That means it worked. If there's no band, it, mean, uh, it means the reaction didn't work.